here's a question. What is the purpose of getting up uh, in the morning? What wake? Here's a question. What is the purpose of getting up uh, in the morning? What wakes me up? What what drives me forward? What directs me? What what is the purpose of of all that I am that I'm doing in the whole of my life, not just in faith, but in my family, in my future, in my finances? What is behind the universe? What is my life all about? Where did I come from? Why am I here? Where am I going? Now, if you want to know the purpose of your life, you got to start with God. You can't tell you what your purpose is because you didn't make you. The only way you're ever going to know your purpose for your life, why you're here on this planet, what on earth you're here for, is A, talk to your creator, God, who made you, and B, read the owner's manual. God has never created anything without a purpose. Every plant has a purpose. Every star has a purpose. Every animal has a purpose. God does not create things without a reason, without a purpose. And if your heart is beating and you're breathing, there's a purpose for your life. Because God never makes anything without a purpose. And the very fact that you're alive makes your life meaningful, that God had a reason for creating you. It is in Christ we find out who we are, what we're living for, part of the overall purpose that he, God, is working out in everything and everyone. The next verse, Colossians chapter 1 verse 16 says this, everything, absolutely everything, got started in Christ and finds its purpose in him. It is in Christ that we find out who we are and what we're living for. So you say, I really got to find myself. You're going to find yourself in Christ. You were made by God. You were made for God. Until you understand that, your life is never going to make sense. You're going to go through life wondering, what on earth am I here for? You got to start with God. God wants you to know him and love him back. Here's what he says in the book of Hosea in the Bible, chapter 6, verse 6. God says, I don't want your sacrifices. I want your love. This is God talking to you. I don't want your offerings. I want you to know me. The most important thing you can know in life is that God loves you. And the most important thing you can do in life is love him back. First Timothy chapter six, the Bible says this. Some people have missed the most important thing in life. They don't know God. They don't know God. Now, how do you know when you don't know God? How do you know when you're disconnected from God? How do you know when in that moment you're not knowing and loving God? God has given us a warning sign and it goes off like a bright yellow light in your life every time you get disconnected from God. And that warning sign is this. (laughs) Worry. When you worry, you're acting like God doesn't exist. You're acting like, if it's to be, it's up to me. No, it's not up to you. It's up to God. And, and you, when, you, when you worry, you're acting like it's all your responsibility, that you don't have a heavenly Father who loves you, that there aren't 7,000 promises in the Bible, that God hasn't already agreed to take care of all your needs. We're always worried about, what does God want me to do? God, what job should I have? Where should I go to work? Where should I go to school? What should I do? And we're always worried about what we should do. God is much more interested not in what you do, but in what you become. And the reason why is you're not taking your career to heaven. You're not taking your car to heaven. You're not taking your cash to heaven, how much money you're making. You're not taking your china to heaven. You're taking your character. The only thing that's going to heaven after your 80 years or so here on earth is you. You're not taking any of your accomplishments. You're not taking any of your achievements. You're not taking any of your acquisitions. You're not taking any of your things you've piled up, stockpiled, money, materialism, stuff like that. None of that's going to heaven. The only thing that's going to heaven is the person you became, the man you became, the woman you became. The only thing you're taking to heaven is your character. 
And God puts you on this planet to develop your character, to grow up spiritually, and to become like Jesus Christ. When things happen to you, the, the normal question you ask is the word, why? Why is this happening? Why is this happening to me? Why is this happening now? And the answer to all the why questions of life is this, to make you like Jesus. To make you like Jesus. If God's going to make you like Jesus, he's going to take you through everything Jesus went through. And Jesus wasn't spared from difficulty. Was there were times when Jesus was lonely? Yes. Time when he was misunderstood? Yes. Were there times when Jesus was disappointed by people? Yes. Were there times when he was tempted to be discouraged and give up? Yes. Were there times when he was just tempted? Yes. And if God let his own son go through all that, don't you think he's going to let you go through it too? Yes. Why? Because he's more interested in your character than your comfort. This is not the comfort side of life. The comfort's going to come in eternity. Comfort's going to come in heaven. This is the classroom side of life where you are to learn. And some things you only learn through difficulty. If you got everything you want, everything went your way, you had no problems, you would be a spoiled brat self-centered brat and the whole goal of life is learning unselfishness it's not about you it's about learning to love God and learning to love other people and that's where fulfillment and joy and purpose comes from you know those problems you don't like in your life every problem has a purpose and that purpose is to make you like Jesus there is no situation in your life you cannot grow from if you'll just trust Jesus and if you'll just learn to respond in the right way. God knows that you've been frustrated with your life. He knows your hurts. He knows your sadnesses. He knows your fears. He knows the turmoil that goes inside of you. He knows the loneliness you feel when you put your head down on the pillow at night. He knows the, the insecurities that you feel that you don't want to admit to anybody else. He knows all of that. He knows every part of you. You're not going to surprise him by, by the hidden part of your life or the life that you're leading. He knows you. He is a loving father. He is the father that cares for you more than for you can ever imagine. And a father wants to guide his children. Before you were born, the Bible says, I knew you. Before you were in your mother's wombs, I know the hairs on your head. Your names are written on the palms of my hand. I have plans for you, plans for welfare and not for evil. Sometimes you may feel just too insignificant. When God called Moses to free the Israelites, Moses protested that he could not speak publicly. When Sarah was promised a son, she protested that she was too old. When Jeremiah was told to prophesy, he protested that he was too young. When God sent Gideon to fight the Midianites, Gideon protested that the family was insignificant. When Samuel anointed Saul with oil, Saul protested that his tribe was too small. And when Samuel anointed David, Jesse protested that David was the youngest of his eight sons. And even Mary when she was promised that she would carry the Messiah, protested that she was a virgin. He sees us not as we are, but as we will become. No man will ever love you. No woman will ever love you. Like your Creator does. Like Jesus Christ does. And to go entirely through your entire life disconnected from your creator who loves you that much makes no sense at all if somebody was willing to die for you wouldn't you want to know about it if somebody loved you so much they died for you wouldn't you want to know them somebody did die for you his name is Jesus Christ and he died for you to pay for all the things you've done wrong so you could live a life of purpose. And my plea to you as your pastor is do not waste your life. Decide right now that for the rest of your life you're going to give the best of your life 
Not to your girlfriend, not to your boyfriend, not to your job, not to something else, but to God and his kingdom. Become what God made you to be, the man God made you to be, the woman God made you to be.